En este video, usted podrá conocer qué es una varice, en qué consiste el tratamiento endoluminal de varices ecoguiado y por qué se ha convertido en pocos años en el preferido de médicos y pacientes en todo el mundo. En esta imagen puede verse una vena sana junto con una arteria y sus correspondientes vasos colaterales. Como sabemos, las arterias llevan la sangre desde el corazón hasta todo el cuerpo, mientras que las venas, ayudadas por válvulas, retornan la sangre hasta el corazón. En una vena sana, como la del esquema, las válvulas se abren para que pase la sangre y se cierran para impedir que la misma retroceda o refluya. Durante el proceso de formación de una varice, la vena comienza a dilatarse y su diámetro a crecer. Pero como las válvulas no acompañan este cambio y quedan del mismo tamaño, la sangre comienza a refluir. A medida que la varice sigue desarrollándose, la vena sigue aumentando su diámetro y sus paredes se vuelven tortuosas. En este estado, muchas veces las varices se vuelven dolorosas, llevando a producir tromboflevitis, úlceras, oscurecimientos de la piel y otros graves problemas, además de las indeseadas consecuencias estéticas. Esta vena, entonces, ya no es funcional y se transforma en insuficiente. En esta situación, la única manera de resolver el problema es eliminando la vena. Hasta no hace mucho, existía un método para eliminar las varices de gran tamaño llamado stripping. Este consistía en introducir un gancho metálico llamado stripper en el interior de la vena extirpar y arrancarla traccionando desde el otro extremo. Como puede verse en este proceso visiblemente traumático, no solo se eliminaba la vena en cuestión, sino todos sus vasos colaterales provocando importantes traumas y hematomas en el área tratada. Vamos a ver ahora qué sucede en el tratamiento de varices con láser ecoguiado. Esta intervención mínimamente invasiva y de muy breve posoperatorio se resuelve con una punción a nivel del tobillo en la zona a tratar y de ser necesario un pequeñísimo corte de un centímetro a nivel inguinal. A través de la primera punción, se introduce una fibra óptica de un espesor similar al de un cabello. Todo este proceso puede ser monitoreado en tiempo real mediante el módulo ecográfico, que le permite ver qué está sucediendo dentro de la vena a cada paso. Como vemos en la imagen ecográfica que provee el equipo, el médico puede controlar con total seguridad desde el momento en que la fibra óptica entra en la vena, cómo la misma va avanzando hasta llegar al área a tratar, y hasta cómo la luz láser es disparada exclusivamente en el lugar elegido. Esto significa la tranquilidad para el médico y el paciente que el proceso se está llevando a cabo al nivel deseado, con total precisión, y la seguridad de no dañar tejidos no involucrados en la patología tratada. Una vez ubicada la punta de la fibra óptica en el tramo a tratar, la luz láser evaporará la sangre que se encuentra en el interior de la vena, provocando la fototermoobliteración del endotelio, sin afectar ni siquiera las paredes exteriores de la misma y menos aún, los vasos colaterales y tejidos adyacentes. Gracias a este nivel de selectividad de la luz láser sobre el tejido deseado, no existen hematomas ni efectos secundarios, permitiendo que el paciente pueda retirarse a su casa en unas pocas horas y volver a su actividad habitual al día siguiente. I'm now going to demonstrate the endovenous axis, and this is using, first of all, the micropuncture needle. So under ultrasound control, what we would do is we would insert this micropuncture needle into the vein, and then we'd use the ultrasound to make sure we were exactly in the right place. Using this model though, you can see we've got a flushback, just as we'd see in the normal patient. When we've got flushback here into the end of the 
micropuncture needle, we can then get our guide wire here with the little introducer. And we can put this straight down the end of the micropuncture needle. And once we're in place there, we can push the wire up inside the vein. And once again, once this guide wire is inside the vein, we can use the ultrasound to make sure we're in exactly the right place. Once that's in position, and we can see where we are, we can then remove the needle, leaving the guide wire in place, ready for the cell digger technique. And you can see tiny, tiny little hole here, which uh, in the real patient would be really tiny access. Once the guide wire is in place, we can then put the introducer in. And this is the Never Touch Direct introducer, which as you can see, is very, very small. It's beautifully tapered, so as it goes through the skin, it will just dilate the skin, making a very small passage. And at the end, you won't even need a, a suture at all. A little stereoscope will be enough to close the wound. So what we do is we just pop the guide wire into the end of the introducer. And before we pass it into the skin itself, we just make sure that enough guide wire is coming out of the other end. This is essential, as within all catheter techniques, because if we push blindly through at that point and weren't holding the wire, then what could end up happening is the wire could be lost inside. So making sure we're holding the wire safely, we can then just slide this introducer straight into the vein. And once we're in this position here, we can then take out the wire and the introducer, leaving the cannula in place. Once we've got access into the vein using the cannula, we can then put the Never Touch Direct fiber into the vein itself through the cannula. When it's going to come to measuring on or the pulling back, we can either use the end of the cannula here or the skin. Due to the specialist marking, it's preferable to use the skin because then we know exactly how deep we are and how far away the tip of the fiber is from the skin at the end of the treatment. So placing the Never Touch Direct fiber in through the cannula, we can go all the way up inside the vein and of course, in real life, we then use ultrasound to see exactly where we are at the top. We can then pull this cannula out, keeping the fibre exactly where it is, and for positioning. Once we're in this position, we can then use the ultrasound to show that the tip of the Never Touch Direct fibre is two centimetres back from the saphenofemoral junction. And so we can then measure here and measure against the number of markings and so we can mark down exactly where we are at that position. At this stage we would then put tumescence all around the fibre and once again this would be under, under ultrasound control and the patient would be placed in the head down position. Once the tumescence is safely around the vein and we're happy with the top position we can start our pullback with the laser on. So the laser will be set to this correct wattage and then once we're firing the laser, we'll pull it back smoothly and continuously, counting how many seconds each centimetre takes to come through. By multiplying the number of seconds by the wattage for each centimetre, we can work out the LEED, or Linear Endovenous Energy Density, to make sure we're closing the vein adequately. As we're doing our pullback, we'll get near the end, and this will be, this, we'll be warned about this, because we'll start seeing the large white marks coming, and we know we're in a few centimetres at the end. In a normal size patient, or one where the vein is only a centimetre or so deep to the skin, we'll keep on pulling back and keep treating right up until these white marks become confluent. In a larger patient, or a patient in whom the vein is deeper, we may elect to stop earlier, making sure that we're not pulling the fibre through any fat tissue, and making sure that the treatment is restricted to the vein only. In a normal patient, we get to the pullback section where we see the confluence of the white marks. And as we can see these three in a row, and it starts going blue afterwards, we would stop at this point. When we withdraw the fibre, we can see that we've got about three centimetres left deep inside. <laughs>